create tools let's talk about using social media for creatives now creatives creators often we use these words synonymously but they're not the same person uh we're just using creator as a blanket term for anybody who publishes content online you could clean pools you could dig holes you can play games you can do, uh, design jewelry you can paint on cars whatever it is you're doing as long as you have a craft and you publish content online that's classified as a creator now a couple of years ago anyone that was online used to be called an influencer but we now there's some distinction between influencer and the actual creator now an actual creative person isn't necessarily someone who publishes content online you could do music you could do songwriting you could be a graphic designer an interior designer an architect um, a fashion designer a, someone who has a creative output is a creative person and I want to talk about those people being these people so I want to talk about creator creative people being creators online so being a creator is more of a skill set to publish content online versus more of a creative output skill set now how do you take your creative output skill set and transfer it to marketing yourself or just being online now a lot of creative people struggle with being online because of things like the algorithm that word things like multiple platforms and things like formats video text image audio how does me as a creative person who does this outside in the real world reality navigate and transfer that online in a beneficial way not only maybe to get some visibility or get some work or to market myself or to connect or network but in a way that actually doesn't lose my soul and when i say lose your soul i don't necessarily mean like in a super spiritual sense i mean lose your creative soul so once you as a creative person become a creator and start publishing content online effectively you've created another job right you've created another job you have to you do this you express yourself here which may be some kind of freedom for you and then you've created a job which is a little less freedom because now you have to keep up now you have to be consistent now you have to be on time now you have to be a certain way now you know this is over here and it's taken a new form and you it might not necessarily resonate with the workflow that you already have in the way you express your creativity the difference between creating for yourself or creating for like your job i'm a graphic designer so creating for my job versus creating for like something like instagram or even pinterest is a very very different uh, process and workflow right whereas i'm used to talking to clients now i've got to talk to an audience um and clients maybe like one to two three people that are maybe you know in the process now there's an audience of five thousand ten thousand 2000 even a hundred people that you're trying to figure out and you're also having to deal with platform changes platform formats and multiple platforms it's a whole new thing as a creative person to now manage so first of all the only way to actually be creative online is to actually just enjoy it you hear so, so many of these uh, content gurus and these con consult consultants and they're like do this you've got to do this you've got to post this amount of times you've got to do this type of content you've got to do that here's the rules bam 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 do this do this have a niche and you before you even start you're already put off because you're like oh my god two how many things do i have to do right so the first thing i always say if you're not having fun then stop doing it you have fun when you create things right yes it's a job sometimes but you try to find the fun in it when you're a creative person you're used to having fun on projects collaborating with the client collaborating with other people collaborating with different teams and now you come online and then people are giving you advice about being so methodical about the way you do things and it's like if you don't do that oh you're doing it wrong you gotta have a hook you gotta have this you gotta have gotta be nine seconds gotta be da -da -da. you gotta have blah blah bam 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 cta and all that you're like damn th there's because when it comes to creativity there's no rules there is no rules let's go through four ways to use social media as a creative person number one document your journey use it as a online visual journey right use it as a place where you come and not necessarily vlog but you can talk about what's on your mind you can talk about which projects you're currently trying to start side projects or currently working on projects you don't necessarily have to name the brand but you can you can name the industry that you're working in and you could use it as a reference point to see where you were a year ago and um, 
people can follow you because we're all on our journeys we're all on our different creative journeys um, and there's so many people that are feeling isolated left behind um, and have no community or no network to talk to and if you show up and say look this is where I am this is where I'm trying to get to this is what the stuff I'm working on this is where I hope to be in the next year follow me on my journey as I explore my own creativity and my own creative self teach and explain now, I see a lot of designers and creative people teaching how to use um, Illustrator, how to use InDesign, how to use Photoshop, how to work with text, type, how to design uh, packaging, um, how to explaining, breaking down older designers, current designers, breaking down uh, movie posters, all kinds of things you can do when you teach and explain online. And again, you know what they say about teaching. When you teach, you learn twice. Ideas, pitches, and resources. I've seen a lot of designers share things like free fonts, and if they're not free, um, things like 10 condensed fonts that you could use, right? Or five websites that have amazing mock-ups, or where to find amazing sounds, or free vectors, or free icons, right? That's resources. I've seen a lot of people pitching ideas. What if this brand did this, and they have an amazing marketing idea that they may not necessarily be able to get to the brand, but they're flexing their creative muscle, um, firstly, and then showing other brands what they can actually do so it might not necessarily get to that brand let's say they're, they're talking about Lacoste or Nike or something like that it might not get to Nike but another smaller brand would be like oh I like the way you you had that marketing idea for them or that creative idea for them could we work with you and you can consult with us and come up with some ideas for us right? you could use it as a secondary portfolio I always suggest having a main portfolio obviously which is your website but you could use it as your secondary portfolio and that could kind of be like your scrap sketchbook or and or final work right and again Sometimes you may not uh, be allowed to put up stuff as you're working on it, but you can certainly put up stuff uh, after it's finished in a presentation, right? And you could use it as your secondary portfolio um, where people can see your work and you could do video because everything's video now, isn't it? So you can like, do a 90 seconds reel um, or two minute TikTok or now a three minute short YouTube shorts or 90 second shorts explaining the process you went through, what you were thinking, some of your inspirations, some of your references, um, and the actual work that you actually did and you could give it an extra level of depth that you may be able to post on your actual portfolio as well, just embed it in the site, a 90 second film or video about the process you took um, in creating this work. So whatever creative skill set you have, it's really just about using that to publish yourself and market yourself and put yourself and live online and have some semblance of freedom and those four ideas you don't necessarily have to pick all four you can pick one you can pick two you can pick three or you can pick all four which however many you have time for um so remember it's not about where what you want to be it's about who you are and having that journey online because this creative journey never ends we're always just trying to stay creative someone asked me the other day how you been i said i'm just trying to stay creative that's that's the main thing. I'm just trying to stay creative. I'm trying not to let the world take me and, you know, next minute, you know, you've forgotten that you actually had a creative out. So now, obviously, as a creative person, ideas, 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 ideas. How do you collect your ideas? Here's a few ways I collect my ideas. I collect my ideas in multiple ways, um, which I need to kind of find a way to centralize them. I have a physical uh, uh, pad. I use notes on my iPhone when I'm on the go. Sometimes I use Notion. Um, and I also sometimes just pull out my phone and record the video straight to camera and then I'll go home, re-script it, re-look at the video and then shoot that video um, again or write a tweet or whatever it is about it. Or sometimes I tweet my ideas and think, okay, if it takes off, um, based on my own how much following I have, if it takes off, then I'll make a video about that. So there's many ways to collect ideas. Just make sure you're constantly collecting ideas. Don't just leave them in here because two minutes later you've forgotten about it and it's gone it's gone it's gone to the next person so hopefully that helped you as a creative person creative practitioner creative professional trying to live online with the algorithms with the different platforms with the different formats how to live online as a creative person um, with some semblance of freedom right without it losing your soul now see you in the next video make sure you create more